It's no secret that this current Supreme Court is eyeballing every right that isn't currently nailing down and maybe second guessing some of that stuff. And if I put this whole thing simply, I'd say there are largely three kinds of rights. First, you got your constitutional rights. This is the untouchable stuff. Carve that into stone. Then you have laws that are passed by Congress. These are largely untouchable, but they can be overturned if the Supreme Court deems them to go against those goal line defense constitutional rights I just mentioned. Remember we carved them into stone. For example, can't ban Catholicism even if you have 61 votes in the Senate. That goes against the constitutional rights. And then lastly, you got these rights that are distributed by the Supreme Court themselves. If a new court comes in and is reading some of these interpretations of congressional laws in a different way, they could change their mind and those rights are now subject to what lawyers refer to as takesies backsies. Now these second and third types of rights are always caught in a weird legal tango, especially right now. You see the tango is turned into the Supreme Court just sort of wiling out on the dance floor alone while Congress takes a 10 year long smoke break. Have fun over there, Whew, I'm wiped out. Read most recent Supreme Court opinions and the outcome is generally, well we think that the law currently says that this part of the population doesn't get protections. If, say, Congress were to change this or to an and in subsection 3a, well then everyone would get protections. Hey, hey Congress, you want to change that word or to the word and in subsection 3a? Oh, you don't have the votes, do you? Well, alright, then our ruling remains the law of the land. Now it's under this context that we see Congress starting to introduce redundancies into the system by passing things like the Respect for Marriage Act. You see, back in 2015, the court granted gay people the right to get married anywhere in the United States of America through the incredibly straight sounding case of Obergefell v Hodges. Now important clarification here, congressional action did not give gay people the right to get married. It was solely the Supreme Court in this decision. Now the problem Congress is identifying and starting to try to solve today is, well the court giveth and the court could taketh away. Now I definitely don't want to minimize Supreme Court precedent in all this, but stare decisis, the main doctrine driving the court to respect legal precedent, is a self-imposed rule. It protects all precedent until a majority of our court thinks it shouldn't anymore. Now the situation Congress sees themselves in today is, well, after spending decades just sort of sitting back and delegating societal change and the creation of new rights to the Supreme Court, they're sort of now coming to the realization about how few on the books laws are actually underpinning some of those rights. Interracial marriage? Not a law, an opinion. Access to contraception? Not a law, an opinion. Desegregating schools? Eh, Brown v Board of Education was never codified into law. Yikes. Now a few months ago, when the court revisited and then overturned Roe v Wade, Congress really started looking around and saying, oh shoot guys, we should probably start writing some of this stuff down. So what are we talking about today? Ah yes, marriage rights and the Respect for Marriage Act. You see, this act serves as a sort of legal double tap for the marriage rights of gay and interracial people. Okay, sure, the court said that you can still get married, but in case they reverse that decision, now we're enshrining that right into law. Have fun interpreting this thing any other way but explicitly articulating a right for homosexuals and interracial couples to get married. Now to be fair, someone could still try to overturn this law by challenging it in the courts as unconstitutional, remember I mentioned that at the beginning of this episode. But short of that, these new rights would be safe from question. And we'll circle back to that unconstitutional question in a few minutes. So that answers the first question, why are we doing this? Specifically, why is Congress passing a law that ensures a right that already exists granted by the courts? So now it's time for the second question of the night. 
what right is Congress explicitly enshrining? If you think that the Respect for Marriage Act is the codification of Obergefell v Hodges, well, you'd be wrong. It's more like the slightly worse knockoff. You see, the current rules based on the 2015 Supreme Court case's ruling say that no matter where in the country you are, the state you're in can't deny you a marriage license because you're gay or in an interracial relationship. Now, the new law that just passed would return the rights to states to deny marriage licenses based on an applicant's being homosexuals or in an interracial relationship. But, and this is a big one, if you have a valid marriage license from a state that will license gay or interracial marriages, every state in the union has to respect that license. Now, this might all sound like a pretty strange way to be regulating things, but newsflash for you guys, Congress is citing their authority to regulate interstate commerce to justify this law. You see, Congress has long possessed the power to license activities that affect interstate commerce, and that includes marriage. One point to the hippie who says, marriage is just a contract, man. It is a contract. Now state licenses won't be able to say, I now pronounce you husband and husband. Some restrictions may apply, offer is void in Tennessee. So now you understand why this law was probably able to overcome the Senate filibuster and pass with 10 Republican votes. It's pretty milquetoast stuff. What passage of this bill seems all but guaranteed at this point, some people are saying that the Supreme Court could still step in and find the Respect for Marriage Act unconstitutional. The specific argument is because its justification is based on the Interstate Commerce Clause. Now, to be fair to everybody, under all current Supreme Court precedent, that law is clearly within the limits of interstate commerce. But there's that word precedent again. I mean, as recently as the 1920s, we've seen Supreme Courts limiting federal interstate commerce regulations to simply product standards, making sure everything is safe for everyone across state lines couldn't even ban child labor or implement federal minimum wages back then. Now some on the right, including Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, would be very happy to start paring back these interpretations and would probably be sympathetic to that sort of challenge to the Respect for Marriage Act. So with all of this information that I've just dumped on you guys, what is the status of gay and interracial marriages in America? Well, we're currently governed by the Supreme Court's 2015 gay rights vote and 1967 uh, interracial rights vote that says that you can't be denied a marriage license because you're either gay or an interracial couple. Now, if the Supreme Court were to overturn those decisions, the rule would be governed by this new Respect for Marriage Act which gives states the rights to deny licenses for gay and interracial couples, should they choose to pass those laws. But they will still have to respect gay and interracial licenses from states that license gay and interracial couples. Now looking at what we just passed in the Supreme Court's recent votes, I actually think that the Supreme Court overturning those two cases just got a lot more likely. Because justices can now cite congressional intent, aka passing the Respect for Marriage Act, and show that it's different from our current reality. Now lastly, if the Supreme Court were to go further and find that the interstate commerce justification is too expansive in this case, well, that would just be overturning the mandate that dictates states must recognize licenses from other states. In which case, well, it would truly just be 50 states, 50 different marriage laws. We're moving to Texas? Well, does that mean we're getting a divorce? And their state legal system? Yup. Now, I know this is a really real world of Supreme Court precedent, us passing laws and everything getting thrown apart, but I hope you understand a little better after watching this video what is going on with the Respect for Marriage Act and Supreme Court precedent. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. 
Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent non part news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.